a new year, so that means it's time for some new faves. No dilly-dallying here, we're gonna get right into this. You all know that I love the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate, and I have been trying their new oil that they came out with fairly recently, which is the Daily Reviving Concentrate. When I wake up in the morning and I cleanse my face, I put a couple drops of this into whatever moisturizer I'm using that day, and then I mix it together, put it on my face, good to go. And I like this because it just kind of amps up my moisturizer, especially during this time of the year when I want a little bit more moisture, but I don't wanna be like, Greasy, especially since my skin already does enough of that for me on its own. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how excited I am to talk about this right here. Oh, this is the Tatcha Polished Classic Rice Enzyme Powder. And this, believe it or not, is a face cleanser. It looks like baby powder slash the Bumble and Bumble Preta powder. Let me just try and put it back in so I don't waste it because this stuff is precious to me. In short, what you do is you wet your face, you put this into your hands, and then you add a little bit of water, you rub it together and it creates this foamy lather and then you wash your face. What's really cool is the powder is a little bit rough so it helps gently exfoliate your face while it's cleaning it and I love how clean this makes my face feel. Plus this is also great for travel since it's not a liquid so you don't have to worry about transferring it into another container and you don't have to worry about it spilling everywhere. If you're not ready to commit to the full size jar I definitely recommend getting this mini size. It's lasted me for over over a month, close to two months actually. NGL, I'm kind of proud of myself because I'm using new brow products. So I saw my favorite blogger, Something Navy, using this brow pencil on her Snapchat. It is the Bobbi Brown Perfectly Defined Long Wear Brow Pencil. And it has a brush on one end and then it has an angled pencil on the other end. It's the perfect shape for filling in your brows and also shaping them. So you can get a nice arch and then flick it out at the end. I used it on my brows today. I think it's be good. Oh, so excited to talk about this. I've been obsessed with the Gwen Stefani palette from Urban Decay. It has pretty much every neutral color that you could ask for, and then it has a great selection of some colors here. And I'm holding it upside down, so the palette is actually the other way around. For what looks like a liner on my eye today, I use the color Punk, and this is my favorite color in the entire palette. Gotta say, I bought this palette because of Eileen, AKA Mama Bay, because she got this palette and then was wearing it like every single day, and I was like, oh man, gotta get that palette. So I did, and I love it. The only blush that I've been using recently is the Chantecaille Cheek Jelly in Happy, and it's what I have on my cheeks today. It probably doesn't show up that much, because it's really subtle and looks so natural, which is why I love it. I'm normally very against like cream and gel blushes, but now I'm really starting to warm up to them because the formulas have gotten really, really great. This absorbs super quickly into your skin, so it doesn't sit on top and make your skin greasy. It's very light, super easy to blend. It looks great even if I'm not wearing foundation, and you can also use this on your lips as well. I have to confess that I am no longer using the Tarte Mascara because they recently changed their brush. Luckily, CoverGirl came out with Plumpify and Super Sizer, which are both really great at holding your lashes up. I have been using this every day that I've worn makeup. I love the waterproof formula. It has a huge brush on it that I love. It really just lifts up your lashes. And then I love the little ball at the end because you can get your outer lashes and your bottom lashes if you want to. I have to talk about this new lip balm that I found because my lips have been incredibly dry and flaky recently. I don't think I've ever experienced such dry lips in my life. And I did so much research trying to find the best lip balm. I went to the beauty departments and just went to every counter and tried every lip balm. I just wasn't impressed. They either had too much of a fragrance or a taste to them, or they were too glossy, or they were too sticky, or they just didn't really do anything, or a combination of all of the above. But then I found the Tatcha lip balm. This is the best lip balm that I have ever used. It's called the Gold Camellia Nourishing Lip Balm. When you first get it, there's a sheet of gold on the top. TBH, in my personal opinion, 
I don't know why there's a gold sheet on top of the lip balm and I think it's a little excessive because I just kind of ended up getting annoyed with it and scraped off as much as I could. I thought that the gold would break down and leave a nice soft little glow on my lips but that wasn't the case. I just had gold chunks on my lips. Once you get past the gold part, this balm is amazing and I've used so much of it and I've had my friends use it and everyone that has tried this is obsessed with it. I love how thick it is. It has a really nice, like, natural, slightly like citrusy scent slash taste. And I love that this isn't super shiny when you put it on your lips. So while it looks like something that would probably be super glossy, it's not. It just leaves like a healthy sheen across your lips. It has just changed everything for me. I am wearing my favorite today. It is from OPI and it's the Infinite Shine 2 Nail Polish in Pretty Pink Perseveres. This is a creamy baby pink color. I have just kind of been craving pink recently, like blush colors or like soft baby pinks. And I love how glossy this nail polish is. I guess that's why it's part of the Infinite Shine 2 collection. Oh, goodness. Gotta mention my cozy Zara sweater. I've worn this so much. And if you wanna see what it looks like on, I wore this in my sweater video and also my sick day video. So I will link those down below if you wanna see what this looks like on a human body and not just like a blob of fabric. My favorite soy candle brand is Kobo, and the candle that I have been loving recently is the Himalayan Spring Juniper. I totally burned through my other one. This scent is a combination of juniper berry, eucalyptus bud, and cedar. So if you're familiar with the Bath & Body Works candle called Fresh Balsam, it basically smells like that, only less artificial and way better. So the reason why I have this new one here is not because I got a new one for myself, but I got a new one for one of you out there. In celebration of my birthday, which was yesterday, I wanted to give away something that I really love in hopes that one of you out there would enjoy it just as much as I do. So if you've never used a soy candle before, if you think that this is a scent that you would really love, slash if you just want to try and win something awesome, all you have to do is make sure you are subscribed to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then down below in the comments, because I am looking for new books to read this year. Leave some recommendations for books that I should read. I'm gonna be going through the comments making my own book list and I'm going to choose someone that suggests a book that I end up buying. I will have all of the rules again down below in the description for you as well as when a winner will be contacted and all of those details. Speaking of books, I have two that I have been loving this past month. The first one is Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed, and I got this as a Christmas present, and I'm a huge fan of Cheryl Strayed. I haven't read Wild, but I love her Dear Sugar podcast with Steve Almond. And the podcast is based off of an advice column that Cheryl used to write. She would answer people's letters anonymously. This book is a collection of the letters that were written to her and her responses, as well as some that weren't ever published. I have to say that this is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. There is literally no subject that goes untouched in Tiny Beautiful Things. Sometimes things that you can't even imagine and other times things that you can totally relate to. And the way that Cheryl responds is through her own personal stories and then using her personal stories to help give the people advice. And she doesn't necessarily tell them what to do do, she just kind of provides a different perspective. Her responses are always filled with compassion and understanding and kindness. Even if you think that the person writing in may be kind of a jackass, this book just really brings a level of humanity and realness to the world, which I think is always needed. Another book that I have been reading that I'm almost finished with is Ask a Queer Chick, A Guide to Sex, Love, and Life for Girls Who Dig Girls. And this is by Lindsay King Miller. So this is also based off of an advice column that Lindsay writes. I have not read her advice column and she does not have the same 
same format as Cheryl where it's like letter, response. This is more like her taking into consideration the letters that have been written to her and then breaking it down into different sections. I really love this book because it's written for girls that like girls, aka me. So it starts out with coming out and then talking about queer subculture, advice on dating, whether you're somebody that's dated a lot of girls or you're kind of new to the field, and lots of other topics as well, including a chapter that is for the straight people in your life. I think there's always something that you can learn and this is just helping me learn more about myself and also the LGBTQ community. I love the way that Lindsay writes. She's super funny, really relatable. It's very easy to understand. She's not like talking in scientific terms or anything like that. This is very straightforward to the point. It's awesome. And this isn't the actual copy of the book. This is the uncorrected proof, but I think the actual book itself just went on sale February 2nd, my birthday. Great job, Lindsay. Loving your book. Can't wait to finish it. Oh my gosh, I am such a dork. And I'm not gonna apologize for it because I love my little manatee. Get it? Manatee. Tea. So I got this when I was in Portland because I was looking for an individual tea infuser. I have loose leaf tea like this, but I don't necessarily want to make a whole pot all the time. I sometimes just want one cup and this allows me to do that. So we just take off the head of our little manatee here and then I'll take a tea. This one is my favorite of the month, BT Dubs. It's from Stash Tea in Portland and I think you can buy their tea online if you want to. This is the green chai, so it's not as strong as a black chai, but you still get that same taste. I'll take a spoonful of the loose leaf tea and I'll pour it in here. And then you stick this in your mug and the manatee hangs on to the side, and when you pour the hot water in, he gets a little bath, like a little spa day. Oh my God, I can't even say this without getting really excited and emotional and apparently kind of singing. The Affair, oh my God, does anyone else watch The Affair? When you first hear the name, you think it's gonna be some kind of like floozy, light, fluffy show. It is not. The show is about an hour long and the first half of the show is from one person's perspective. Say it's the man. The second half is from the woman's perspective. Sometimes they flip it around and in season two they expand to two more different perspectives. The memory bias is so awesome to see because for example in the man's perspective the woman that he's having an affair with is really put together and she's kind of like this sexy sultry vixen and in in her memory, she's very timid and scared and kind of disheveled. So it's really cool to kind of pick up on those details and differences. And then it doesn't even end there. The story brings you back to present day where you realize that these two characters are being interrogated by a detective for something. And you don't know what that is at first. And they give you a little bit more in every episode. And I have to say the first season finale was so satisfying. I was really happy with it because a lot of times I'm like that was such a cop out or stop leaving me hanging so hard and they still leave you hanging but they answered all of the questions that you want answered which I really appreciated. I will say that it has a lot of adult content in it. It is very intense and it does have a lot of sex in it so you see a lot of naked people but it's a great show. I'm loving the storyline. So that is gonna be it for my favorites this month. If you would like to watch my last video, you can click off to the side and watch it and, you know, go through that magical YouTube vortex thing that happens straight to that video. Or if you've already seen it, you can watch it again. I would really love that. It would be an awesome birthday present if you did that. But until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.